Okay. So let's look at a heap. Okay, priority queue. Heap is our data structure. Okay, and its biggest application is in priority queues. So very quickly, let's first talk about what is a priority queue. And after this, we're going to talk about the heaps. Did somebody start recording the lecture? Okay, you already did that. All right. So let's talk about priority queues first. What is a priority queue? Okay, a simple example. Um, let's say you go to the hospital. Okay, uh, so here is the reception desk and here is a queue. So people come and they stand in the queue, okay, to be served by the receptionist. So the first person goes and um, yeah, gets served by the receptionist. So she's going to direct him to the doctor or the pharmacy or whatever. And then the next person and then the next person. So there is a queue. <clears throat> Now, sometimes it happens that there is a more important case, let's say an emergency case, which comes in, okay? So we don't make him stand or wait in the long queue. Immediately we push him to the front of the queue because he has priority, okay? So he can be served immediately. This means that in real life, okay, you can see this. This was a scenario from a hospital. All right, how about the traffic? Let's say you're driving on Daddy, okay, and you have four lanes, and there's many cars going in this direction, okay? All of a sudden, uh, there's a ambulance which comes in, it's driving in the high-speed lane. So all the cars, they move aside to give space to the ambulance, all right? So once the ambulance passes, Okay, that's another story that everybody starts running behind him uh, because there's vacant space behind him and he's going faster. So this is another example of priority, okay? Um, one vehicle on the road has high priority than others, so they can go faster. Can you give me an example, another example? Anybody? Um, hmm. Well, like any queue, basically. Like if there's a queue, there's a priority. Example, uh, like if there's a, a VIP lounge or something, and then like there's this event, so people will go through like uh, the VIP lounge if they're VIP, and like normal people go to the, I don't know. Okay, that's good. Um, what about flying? Let's say you want to fly to another place, so you go to the counter for check-in, and usually they have two queues. They have business first class queue, and then there is the uh, economy queue for everybody else. Mm, yes. So, yeah, you go to the higher priority queue if you carry the first class boarding pass. Okay, so that's another example. So in real life, um, priority is there. Okay, queues are not simplistic. There are priorities. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> priorities could be you know, things can be important. Other times things can be not very important. An example is from operating systems, okay, OS. Is somebody taking OS now? I think there's one student, Hamad, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, doctor, yeah. So operating systems have processes, okay? An example of this is whenever you double click on an icon on your desktop, it's going to launch an application. When you launch an application, there could be multiple processes launched at the same time. Um, so some pro processes, they have higher priority and others have low priority, okay? So usually in the operating system, we define PID, process ID. And for each of the process, there is some kind of priority. Uh, example, let's say, there is a kernel process, okay? Kernel is a core of an operating system. Let's say it has a very high priority, plus 1,000. And then there's another process which is for printing. Its priority, mm -hmm. let's say, 200. Okay? Doctor, there, the, the one that assigns the priority, like it's a hardware, right? It's like the master or something they call it? Kernel. 
Mm, okay. Yeah. So it assigns the priority for each thing. Yes, yes, yes. And let's say that there is a process which has a very low priority, let's say minus 100. Okay. So now we have a queue like this in the operating system. Whenever a process or application is launched, it gets into the queue. But then it's sorted based on the priority. So the highest priority gets served first by the processor, okay? And the lowest priority stay in the queue. Now, this is really funny. Um, in 1960s, MIT, at that time, we used to have very large computers. It was mainframe computers. So they had to upgrade that particular computer. It was a very large computer. It had been running for five years straight without turning off, okay? And at that time, the computers used to be shared by people. So there was just one big computer and people would time share it. Let's say this student will go and use his computer from two to three, and the other person goes and uses it from three to four. So the the admin in the university, they, they asked everybody to remove their data from the server, from the computer, because they wanted to upgrade it. They would have to turn it off and then upgrade the computer. So after two weeks, everybody copied uh, all the data. And after two weeks, when it was time to turn off the computer, they realized that there was a process which was still there, okay? And the process was running there. Somebody had accidentally or intentionally created a process with a priority of minus 1,000, lowest priority, okay? And when they were about to turn off the computer, they realized that this process started five years ago, five years ago. So it was running in the computer for five years, staying in the queue, never getting executed because it had such a low priority. So <clears throat> priority is important. And in real life, like what I've said, uh, it's important to implement queues with the priority in there. But how does that work? So now I'm going to show you some slides. Okay, let's have a look at... Uh, um, doctor, is it related to trees? Because like when, like in your website, it shows trees and then priority queues. Yes, yes, of course. So like I said over here, priority queue is an application of a data structure called heap. So okay. now I'm coming to that. So let's say I have a queue. Okay, I have a queue. And I would like to store some information in there. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm creating tuples or values. Let's say A has a priority one, B has priority two, C has priority three, okay, D has priority four. So we're looking at the priority and not the data. Okay, we don't care about what the data is. Data would be processed later on. But when we are organizing stuff in my queue, I'm going to go with the priority. So in this particular example, we're saying lower number means higher priority. Okay, it can be other way around. You can say 10,000 is the highest priority, zero is the lowest priority. So in this particular example, I'm considering lower number to be of a higher priority. Okay, now, uh, can we have duplicates? Of course we can. Let's say there's another B with a priority five. Okay, so that's fine. We can we duplicate values? Okay, how about let's create another one? E with a priority one. Okay, when E enters the queue, when E enters the queue, what we have to do is we have to move it in the front because it has a higher priority. So it will go over here between this node and this node. Okay, mm -hmm. is this clear? Any questions? Doctor, can you use this to sort data? Sorting, yeah, of course, sorting needs to be done. We have to do sorting. Like, can we make the priority algorithm to like sort a specific type of data? Indeed, we'll talk about this thing. So once we're done with heap, okay, we're going to talk about heap sort. There's a sorting algorithm which uses this data structure to sort the data. Mm, okay. Okay, so far so good. So now the thing is, if I have maintained a queue like this, okay, if I implement this thing using an array-based data structure, okay, assuming that there is some kind of array 
where I'm storing all of this information, A1 and B2. Let's assume that these are objects, okay, and so on. So when E1 comes in, what I have to do is I have to bring this over here. Mm, okay. So you have to shift the other. This needs to shift, 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 okay? And we already know this thing is shifting in an array's runtime is big O of N. Mm. Right. What if I implement this using the linked Please. list approach? Okay, linked linked approach. List. So I create a linked list, okay? and C3, and D4, and so on. Okay, and when E1 comes in, okay, how would I know that it needs to go here? The priority, the... Yeah, so if I'm implementing this, this means that I have to find the correct position for this priority, which yeah. is right now. So they so have to be sorted. Search, yeah. First, they need to be sorted. Everything in there needs to be sorted. And once new value comes in, I have to go and find the correct position and then update my link list. What if my low priority data comes in, let's say, Z10? Okay. So I have to search, go all the way until the end of the list, and then go and insert this thing at the end. So, so yeah, it's a big O. Yeah, that's also a big O of n. Okay, so both of these solutions are not good enough. Not good enough. Okay, both of them are giving you O of n time. Type I've already studied AVL trees, and AVL trees are guaranteeing O of log of n time. So now we are we become. Uh, spoiled. We want to go with O of log of n time. We don't want to go with O of n time. O of n seems very slow, very ancient, very old. So we have to come up with a different approach. Okay. If you already know that EBL trees, okay, leverage this shape, and we say that mm -hmm. it's growing this way and going upwards. Okay, finding something, searching for some information in a tree-like structure. As long as the tree is an almost complete tree, they know that that kind of gives us O of log of n time. So we would like to find a solution okay, that's going to give us log of n time. So in comes heaps. Okay, so heap is a data structure that allows you to maintain a tree. Okay, you can very easily use this thing as a priority queue. All right. Now I'm going to show you some slides. Let's have a look at the slides. Then after the slides, we're going to look at some examples. This looks like a complete binary tree in nature. Okay, you can see this thing. Every branch is splitting into exact two branches. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, <clears throat> Here's an array representation of a complete binary tree. Like we studied this before when we were talking about binary trees, before we started talking about binary search tree. Okay, so to understand binary heap, okay, the data structure we're going to use is array. Okay, we're going to use array. Notice a few minutes ago I told you, if I implement queues with arrays, I may have to shift and shifting is a painful process with O of n time. So here, we're proposing that we'll use arrays in a very clever way, okay? We're going to use arrays in a clever way so that the runtime would be O of log of n instead of O of n. So here are some of our definitions, okay? We're going to store keys and priorities, okay? Keys are going to be stored in the nodes. So the picture you see in, in front of you on the right side, it's a tree which is storing characters. Characters are the keys. Right. Now, one important property that we need to know, parents keys must be larger than both of the children's keys, okay? Parents as like a character value, like the ASCII value? value. Yeah, mm -hmm. the parent key must be larger than both of its children. 
Now, this is conflicting. It's different from what we studied in body search trees and ABL trees. In BSTs and ABLs, we studied that the parent is larger than the left side and it's smaller than the right side. Okay? But here it's different. Here we're saying the parent must be larger than both of both the of them. children. Mm. Okay. Right. Does that mean that the left child must be smaller than right child? The right child must be larger than left child? We did not say that. Okay, so, so it doesn't means, matter. It does not matter. Okay, okay. And it must be larger than both of his children. It doesn't matter if the left child is larger or the right child is larger. Both of them must be smaller than the parent. Okay, having said this, we're going to store the tree, okay, in the array. Remember, we studied this process before. Okay, there was a definition where we looked at a formula which tells us that if you, if I give you the position of a node, you can tell me the position of the parent, you can tell me the position of the left child, you can tell me the position of the right child. We studied this before. Okay, so here, if you look at this array representation, okay, we always keep position zero as empty. Okay, root would be at position one, left child is on position two, right child mm -hmm. is on position three, and so on. Okay, so okay. this is how we're going to store our tree in the array. All right, so what's cool about this approach is that unlike the linked object approach, we don't have to maintain pointers. Okay, it's easy to implement it this way. All right. Now, <clears throat> the largest key is always the root, okay? Because remember, we've said this thing. The parent is okay. like both of its children. So oh, so like means, now the priority is like the parents, basically. No, so no, the we more you go. Yeah, wait, 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 wait about the priority. Okay, so here, the largest value must always be the root of the tree. Okay? Mm -hmm. And Let's then the second the priority is the one under it, and then the second, third priority is the one under it. So you can go with the levels. Okay? So the root is the largest. And then the second level is S and R, third level is P and O, A, and so on. Okay, so the formulas, we already talked about that before, sorry. These are the formulas, okay, we, we studied this before. So if I give you the position of a node, you can find its parent by dividing this position by two. The left child will be two times the position of the node, the right child will be two times the position of the node plus one. Plus one. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how a heap works. There are two processes for insertion and removal. Okay, insertion and removal. So let's have a look at a small demo. Um, doctor, is it always like uh, near a complete tree? It's almost going to be like this. What's the, in front of you? Almost a complete tree. Mm, okay. Okay, so here is some tree given to you. Okay, we say that this tree is heap ordered. The tree is heap ordered. Okay, what does that mean? Remember, we've studied only one property, which is the parent must be larger than both of its children. Mm -hmm. So if you look at this, T comes after P and R. P comes after N and H. N comes after E and I, e and, I. and so on. So we have to validate this. We have to verify this at every single stage to ensure that the tree is heap order. Okay. Now, <clears throat> whenever we try to insert or remove something from the tree, there's a very big chance that the tree will not be heap anymore. It's not heap ordered anymore. So what we do is we use two processes. We use a swim process and we use a sink process. These two processes ensure that after you insert and remove, your tree stays as heap ordered. Babe, how does that work? Now let me show you. Mm -hmm. So our tree appears in front of you. What appears at the bottom of the screen is the array, the contents of the array. 
Okay, so I'm going to show you now. Of course, you can see the tree, but the computer cannot see the tree. The computer only looks at the array. Mm -hmm. Now, we'd like to insert S. So, what we do is we'll go and insert S at the last position in the array. Simply go insert S at the last position. But once I insert S at the last position in the array, I'm not sure if the tree is still a heap or not. So what we do is we quickly check, compare S with its parent. <coughs> Which mm, one is okay. the parent S? Uh, H. What's, no, okay. Like for now, do. for now it's H, but like. But how would the computer know? We need so, to have a formula. Yeah, use a formula. So the position of S is 11. 11 divided by two will give you five and a half, which is integer division five. Okay, so this means H is at position five. H must be the parent of S. So mm -hmm. what we are going to do is we're going to compare the value of S with H. Okay, okay. remember the larger should be the parent. Mm -hmm. So as it happens, H is smaller than S, which means our it's heap not... condition is violated. Okay, this is not a heap anymore. Do you replace it? So what we're going to do now is we're going to use a swim process. Okay. So we're going to compare S with its parent. If S is larger than H, we're then going to swap. Them. We're yes. going to switch them or swap them. So mm -hmm. S becomes the parent of H. Notice one thing. When we S check G. up, okay, H has to come down. So now G and H, both of them are smaller than S. So this little subtree, S, G, H is now heapified. Okay. We still need to check G, right? The if like G is bigger. No, we don't have to check because G oh, must because be, H was oh yeah, yeah okay. H was already larger than G. Mm. So G must be smaller than S. So, so now we check bigger. again S with the its parent P. Now we're going to compare S with P. Okay? okay. So S is bigger than P, so we have to switch it. Notice so far we've switched only two times. Okay? Yes. We switched only two times. Right. Third switch could happen when we compare S with T, but S is smaller than T, so we don't have to switch it or swap it. Mm -hmm. This means the maximum number of times that we tried to swap was three. Isn't this the height of the tree? Oh, yes. So this means the runtime is log of n. Okay? Log of n? Yeah, yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to go and change everything. We don't have to shift the whole array. All what we did was we swapped, okay? The problem node, or we swam it up until it reached its original position. And the maximum number of swaps would be log of n. Okay, is this clear? Any questions about this? It's clear, it's pretty clear. The actor, the root position is one, not zero, right? Again? The root, its position yes. in the array is one, not zero. Yes, yes, root position is one, starting at one. And the height is four, not three, right? Height in this case is one, two, three, four, yeah, yes. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> let's look at how do we remove something. But remember one thing from a heap, because we're talking about priority, Okay, so the highest priority comes at the top. Of course, when you want to remove something from my queue, the highest priority should go away, which means the root must be deleted. Okay, so this is what we do. When we want to remove the root, okay, this is what we do. We're going to swap a root with the last value in the array. Okay, so last position is H. I'm just going to swap H with T. Okay. Now we can safely remove T. Notice what happens. T goes away. Okay. We've removed the T, the largest value from the tree. Now, is this a heap? No. We cannot be sure. Remember, our property is that the largest value must be on the top. So if you pick something from the bottom, which could be one of the smallest values, and you put that on the top. Okay, most likely there is going to be a problem. So what we do here 
is now we have to use a sync operation. We have to use the sync operation, okay? So the parent now is not larger than either of its children. Now what we're going to do is we're going to check the children. Which child is bigger, S or R? So P, Q, R, S, T. S is larger than H. Sorry, S is larger than R. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap H with S. So that's our first swap. Okay, that's our first swap, S with H. Now, S is in its right position. S is now the largest value in the tree. But now H is still violating the HEAP5 property. So again, we repeat the same process. N and P, which one is larger? What do you think? N which one comes after, larger. N or P? Uh, P. P. P comes, P. P comes after. So we're going to swap H with P. P is the larger. So P becomes the parent of N and H. Okay. So this is the second swap. Go again. H with G. H is, small, G is smaller, sorry. Now there's only one child, which is G. So we have to check. Compare G with H. Okay. G is smaller, which means we don't have to swap it and we're done. Okay, so this is what happened. Yeah? Whenever you insert something or remove something from the heap, okay, we have to do exactly O of log of n number of sink or swim operations, which means now the runtime of the heap data structure is going to be O of log of n. No faster, no slower. It's always giving you log of n. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's, it's still a good thing. It's a bad thing, I think. Log of n or n? Log of n. Oh, it's better. Yeah, it's fair. Log of n is a good time. But you want to insert or remove always, it gives you log of n time, regardless of the position of the value. For example, you decided to remove s. It's going to give you log of n time. You decided to remove g. Still log of n time. Okay, so that's kind of fixed. It's guaranteeing that runtime is always going to be log of n. But yeah, do you remember queues? The queue, simple queues data structure. We said that if you want yes. to enqueue or dequeue something, the runtime would be big O of n. Mm -hmm. But if you want to search and remove something from the queue, the runtime would be O of two n. Two n. Okay. It was more than n. So we have a similar problem here. What if somebody says, hey, go and search I, search I in the heap. So we don't know where I is, okay? Uh, so that's a problem with this particular data structure. We should never use it for searching. The searching can give it O of N time. <clears throat> So this is just a run of the same thing again. I'm going to go back to my slides. Okay, let's have a look at the code for this. And then we're going to compare this with the AVL tree. So this is the swim. This is the entire code for the swim method. Okay, we're passing it integer k, integer k. Remember, k is a position, okay? We're working with the positions here. So, swim means going up or down? I'm going up. Going up. So, when are we going to use swim? For insertion or for removing? Insertion. For insertion. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we always insert at the end. Yes. Okay. And that needs to go up. So integer k would be a very large value, usually the last value in the array or the last index position in the array. So we're going to run a loop. Okay. Just looking at the loop, can you tell me the runtime? What's the runtime of this loop? Just look at the loop. Anyone? Runtime of the loop? 
Logofan, why? Because it's K over 2. Good, because K over 2. Okay, in every iteration, you're dividing the value of K by 2. So it's going to give you log of N time. Mm, yes. So while K is bigger than 1, okay, yani it's not the root. And we're comparing the value of the parent with the current node. If it is true, we go and exchange the parent with the current node and K equals K divided by two. Okay, so that's gonna swim a node up. Doctor, we have another method for exchanging. Yeah, 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 we're coming to mm -hmm. it. Okay. So exchange is swap. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. This is my insert method. Okay, insert method. So somebody gives you a key object. Okay, we'd like to insert this. So what we do is remember we're implementing a simple array, simple linear array. So we're saying go to the last position. N N holds the last position. So increment the value of N, and we're going to insert the value in the last position of the array. Once you've inserted this in the array, we're going to pass swim and the last value. Notice we saw the swim method a second ago. This was the swim method. Mm, yes. Okay, so swim works with insert. Swim is called from insert. This is the insert method, just two lines of code. Okay, let's look at sync, how sync works. So again, we're going to pass it uh, usually the node on the top, which is the root. Okay, and we want to sync it down. So again, we're going to run this loop log of n times. Okay, so while two times k is less than or equal to n. Now we're going to check, compare it with the left child and the right child. So we're going to use two new variables. We're, sorry, just one new variable, which is j. Okay, so integer j equals two times k. Two times k means left child. Left child, okay? Two times k is left child of the node at position k. So we have the first if condition. If j is less than n, and yeah, doctor, what's n? n is the last value, last position. Oh, okay. So if j is less than n, and we're comparing, we're comparing j with j plus one. Like remember, j contains what? Mm, j what contains two k, or like two times k. Which is okay. What is which K? is the left child? Or like... Good. So J contains the position of the left child. What should be the right child? J plus one. So J plus one position no, for the right no. child should be J plus one. So this uh, if condition is carefully crafted. If J is less than n, and we compare the left child with the right child. Okay. So if left child is smaller than the right child. If the left child is smaller than the right child, which one should we pick, left or right? Mm, right. We're doing sync. Ah, uh, sync, we're choosing left. We have to pick the bigger of the two children. We have to pick the larger of the two children and then replace the larger child with its parent. So mm -hmm. what's happening so right. is we're comparing the left child with the right child. If the left child is smaller, we pick the right child. If the right child is smaller, then we stay with the left child. Okay, so this is exactly what the if condition is doing. So if the left child is bigger, we don't change the value of J. J stays as is, I need the left one. If the right child is bigger, we're incrementing J. So J becomes plus one, whatever is J plus one. Now we go to the next line. Now we compare the larger of the two children with the parent. Okay, the larger of the two children with the parent. Type. If the parent is larger than the, the larger of the two children, then we break the loop, we stop, we're done. If not, now we have to exchange. We have to swap the larger child with the parent. And then we say K equals J, K equals J. So this loop is kind of working in the reverse order. Instead of dividing everything by two, we are multiplying everything by two. 
because you're going from top to bottom. So K would be one, then it becomes two, then it becomes four, then it becomes eight and so on until the loop breaks. Okay, so this is the sync method. So have a look at this again, okay? Try to work out um, or create a tree like this and then try to work it out on your own, try to simulate it and you will understand it thoroughly. Let me show you now the remove method, okay? So we don't really have to call it remove because it only removes the root. So some implementations call it remove the maximum, delete the maximum, delete root, something of this sort. Mm, so we can't so, remove anything else other than the root. Yeah, the only thing you remove is just like in the stack, okay? The one on the top, which is the root. Yes. Okay. So here we're saying key max equals to priority q one. One, remember, it contains the root. So we take the value at the root and we store this in max, okay? And the way we saw this thing in the simulation, we're going to exchange the maximum position with the last position, which is N. Last position is N. And then we apply sync. Remember, sync always starts from the root. So sync one. So that's a method that's going to take care of all, all of this. Okay. And then we just add one extra line, which is priority Q N plus one equals null. But if this is optional. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. But for safe programming, uh, it's better to put this kind of line in there. And at the end, we return max. Max is a value that you just removed from the tree. Let's look at the exchange method now, or the entire code. So here's the entire uh, heap implementation. So if you look at the class, public class, max PQ, a priority Q, okay? Uh, so we sometimes call this thing max PQ. Sometimes we call it max heap. Why max? Because the largest value is on the top. But if you flip everything, what if you go with the smallest value on the top? In that case, we're going to call it min PQ or min heap because the smallest value is on the top. Okay, so we're going to have an array and we're going to maintain an integer N which holds the last position. Or uh, if you look at public max PQ, that's the constructor. It takes the capacity or the size of the array, the maximum possible size of the array. So you simply create an array of this size. We have this empty method. If n equal equals zero, this means the priority queue is empty. We already saw the insert method and delete max method. We also saw the swim and sync methods. Okay. Uh, here's a less method, which is simply comparing Two, val two values at two positions. And the last one is exchange. Remember exchange uh, is just three steps. We saw this thing before. How do we exchange uh, two positions, two values? Okay. <clears throat> so here's the summary now. Boundary heap, insert runtime is log of n. Okay. Delete or remove something from the boundary heap is also log of n. Okay. Finding the maximum value in the tree would be constant. You can simply go and check the value on mm -hmm. the root. That's going to yeah. give you the maximum value. But like I said before, if I want to search for a value, how long would it take? Log of n? No guarantee. Uh, okay, because it's binary? It's binary. Can we, like, do we do it? Like there's an implementation with AVL? Good point. So BST, there's a search in the name of it, boundary search tree, okay? It's designed to search things faster. AVL mm -hmm. is part, is kind of BST. So AVL and BST are really good for searching information, but heaps are not good for searching information. They're really good for inserting and removing stuff, okay? So, so far, all the data structures that we have studied, okay, let me stop here. Uh, there are some advanced topics on how do you can make it even faster, so I'm not going to go in there. Okay. So here, uh, if I want to summarize everything, uh, so insert, remove, and search. Okay. So these are our linked lists. Okay. Stack and queue. And we have body search trees, AVLs, and now the heap. OK, 
Okay. So runtimes quickly. All of this was often. Oven, oven. Okay, stacks, often. Search was all of 2M. Mm -hmm. Okay, Q, open, open. Searching something would also give you 2M. A bunny search tree, worst case time. Open. 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 Remove. Open. Open. Logophone. Okay. Search logophone. No, worst case scenario. Oh, worst, yeah, okay, so. Remember the scenario? Mm -mm. That's worst case. Okay, AVL. All of them log of N. All of them log of N. Okay, good. And now the heaps. Insert. Log oh. of N, remove log of N. And then search big of N. Oh. Oh, yes. Okay. So, so far, which data structure wins? AVL. So AVL is better. But if I want to compare the size of the code that you have to write for AVL with heaps, which one would you prefer? Mm, heap. <laughs> heap is only a few lines of code, probably less than 20 lines of code. In AVL implementation, what we saw was around 400 lines of code. Yeah. OK. So implementation-wise, heap is really good. OK? If you know that you don't have to search anything, the only thing you do is insert and remove, then heap is mm. really, really cool. This runtime is log of n. Implementation is very easy. It's not complicated at all. But if you have to search, then AVL is the best data structure. This gives you the best searching time. 